So, um, yeah, I looked at the video, and although a lot of vocalizing and a lot of rough play seemed pretty normal, right? Good. Uh, yeah, that made me feel so much better, I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you know, the thing is, is what's your comfort level with their intensity when they play, right? Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. Can, you can set thresholds for how they're playing, like the intensity of their play. Uh, you know, like the one, the one video, you actually disconnected them pretty easily, right? So, and then other videos, they went a little harder. Yes. So, and I think that's part, part of what I wanted to explain. And I, I think the videos did a pretty good job of showing their interaction with each other. That's how they play. And I was worried last week, there are times when if I call or I snap my fingers or I squeak a toy or something that they don't quickly separate. It takes a while. It takes me going over. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is how can I do that without yell? Like, I don't, I, I don't want to be yelling. I think it's, you know, first of all, I don't, I don't want to do it. <laughs> but second of all, I, I want like a quick, like, should I get a whistle or something that might be sort of a quicker, easier, sharper, and not some harridan in the neighborhood yelling at the dogs. I don't want them hearing me yelling all the time. And I don't want the neighbors <laughs> hearing me yelling all the time. Um, and the other thing is, so that I could describe to you, and I think I said it in my note, Henry is the instigator about 85% of the time. And, and you, could, you couldn't really see that. You could see they, they both sort of snarl and show, will show their teeth, but um, sort of grab onto each other's sort of loose skin and the ears. Um, but Henry really is the instigator about 85% of the time. And he's more persistent about it. So he'll like jump on him, break, jump on him, break. And he'll go after the toy, for example, at the lake. He'll, go up, he'll be standing there waiting for Calvin to bring up the toy. But he'll drop the toy immediately and jump on Calvin. It's like, it's boom, boom. And it's, there's something about their interaction that makes that so. Like, I think that Henry is younger. I think younger, less trained, maybe more... Um, uh, more insecure or something. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Although he, you can tell he's he's almost always on top when they're when they're fighting. Also, he like sort of jumps on top. And but um, so that's one of it. One of the things. Like I don't. I don't want that consistently happening. Um, and I want to just be able to break it up when it, like let them run and go crazy. Break it up. Play because they're just gonna when they're at the lake and I'm throwing the toy. They're off leash. And they're just going to keep doing it. I just want to be able to call them back, stop them from doing that. And if they start racing down, you know, into my neighbor's yard or something, I want to, I want to have a signal that gets them to turn around and come back. Um, uh, because it's not screaming calm or anything like, you know, they're, they're in the midst of that play. Um, and then sort of separate, but not entirely separate for me is, is that I want to be able to introduce them to other dogs and have them playing. Um, and I wanted to talk through the best way to do it because I think it's a lot to have two of them. I think it has to be one at a time. Um, and even, you know, at, at any point it has to be, I think, to start the introductions resource free because they do have that defense of each other where, you know, they're, they're perfectly, they're perfectly great with other dogs. But if, if we were on my friend's porch, they have a great English bulldog um and when he had his toy like a ball and we we were playing with the ball and henry went for the ball but winston got it it's his toy like it had, he wasn't they weren't seriously challenging each other but when winston grabbed the ball calvin from the other side of the deck starts barking because henry you know was ballless i was like whoa <laughs> you know, okay that's a so anyway that's that's kind of what i want to do and i do have a friend I, I didn't hear you. Also, I, I just want to figure I, out. I didn't hear what you just said. Oh, I said I have another friend here who has two goldens. Okay. Who I want to figure out how how do I introduce my two goldens to her two goldens and have it be sort of nice and calm. Hers are one female, one male. But anyway, so that's my that's my summary, I guess. Okay. 
So first and foremost, I actually do recommend for people who can't whistle to go to like uh, Dick Sporting Goods or something like that and buy a coach's or a referee whistle. Yep. Okay. I've got, I've got. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, is that for when you're using something like that, you want to use that for a specific scenario. So in this case, you're only going to use the whistle for play. Okay. Okay. Because that's going to be a specific signal for that situation. Right. Um, yep. And, you know, you can use the whistle and follow it up with a recall. Right. So it's almost like clicker training, but we're using the whistle as the sound. So, and, you know, just like everything else, we have to work the dogs individually before we work them together. Right. Okay. So maybe, you know, create some distance between one of the dogs, hit the whistle give the come command, they come to you, give a treat, right? Because you can give treats with them sitting side by side, right? I can, yes. Hen Henry tends to really, really want, you know, if I give it to him, but I have been able to actually successfully get them to work both stay and come. Right, so. Next to each other. Perfect. So. So, yeah, as long as there's no like uh, guarding issues when giving treats. Some dogs will get snappy when there's treats involved. So. So nope. you, you would work them individually, use the whistle as the, as the cue, right? Um, so yeah. let's, you got, and the, the key is you have to wait till whatever dog you're working, you have to wait till they're into something really interesting. Okay. Right. So kind of let them go about their business. Maybe they're, they, they're sniffing on a spot. That's all it takes is for them to be focused on something. So it could just be sniffing overly interested in a specific spot, hit the whistle, come, Right. The whole purpose is, is to condition them to the whistle and the come command, right? So when they hear that whistle, they're going to look up and then you give the recall. The repetition okay. of that, they hear the whistle, they're probably going to just start coming to you. So yeah. that's a good way of breaking up the intensity of play, okay? okay? But again, start with one, then add both, okay? Yes. Now, the other part is, is in the one video where you did disconnect them, their level of play was not as intense as I saw in another video. Right. So you need to kind of just, and it's hard because, you know, you, they're playing different ways. Sometimes you have to kind of set almost like a mental threshold where you feel uncomfortable with their play, uh, whether it's the intensity of play or the amount of time they're wrestling, because the amount of time that they're wrestling, usually that will escalate into right. more intense play. So whether it's intensity or the time in which they're quote unquote wrestling, you have to set those thresholds and be as consistent as possible. Okay. You're not going to be perfect. You know, it's not going to, but I can tell you in my own household, you know, my wife and I, we have different thresholds for what we allow our dogs to do. I don't know if I mentioned this. You did. Yeah. You had said that. And you know, it, we didn't like put, we didn't do training for them to understand that me and my wife have different thresholds. It's just a matter of, and I probably talked about obedient versus obedience. Yes, you did. Right? It's just a matter of the dogs being obedient to our cues, right? And my wife and I have different thresholds that we allow our, the dogs to play and they get it because they know the repetition of, hey, you know, sometimes it's just a clap, enough. Right. Right. In your case, we're going to use the whistle again. Be, you know, I'm in the country. I got two and a half acres. I'm loud. I'm not bothering anybody when I yell. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I don't mind yelling, but I don't want to be screaming Calvin right. and, and no. they're less responsive to their names when they're deeply into something like that. And I don't want that to and, be a thing. Yeah, you, like, don't want to, you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to use their names to disconnect a very happy state of mind. Uh, that's a good point. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I'm trying to like get them to, to just hear me. No, I'm talking to them. And that's we're, why I like the whistle. <laughs> we're, use, we're using the whistle for them to cut the shit. Yeah. We're conditioning them to respond to the whistle for a come command. Right. right? So we're doing it for our reason. We're teaching them something different than what our reasoning is for using the whistle. Right. I gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's the disconnect with a lot of, how a lot of people interact with their dogs, like the off command. A lot of people, they try and teach the off with just get off, get off, get off, right? Right. Um, I like to follow that up with praise when all four paws on the ground. 
right? So we're teaching off to get the dogs off of something. The dogs are learning the word off means all four paws on the ground. Right. So that's actually really good, Jeff, because I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm consistent with it because I just get upset. Henry especially will jump, but both of them can do it. Um, and not just on, like sitting on, you know, <laughs> Henry, when I'm on a call like, like this or a work call, will sometimes come and put his paws on the table and stick his face in the computer camera. <laughs> hysterical. So I have a hard time like, like getting, you know, it makes me laugh that he does it. Right? Like, yeah. And everybody thinks it's cute because he's adorable. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's really the jumping on people that I don't like. And that like, you know, I know so many people, the woman who has the two golden, she's like, Oh no, I don't mind. I'm like, yeah, I understand. And, and I don't mind when he jumps up and gives me a hug, but I want him down. Like I want him down because he's going to jump on my, 90 year old mother and uh, like that I can't have right yeah, and right right now yeah. you're you're still setting rules for them so yes that jumping has to be black and white there can't be yeah. any gray areas right now yeah right? and they're okay. still young they're what two years old two yeah that's ish right so you know they're yeah. still pretty young so you want to yeah. make sure you're setting consistent rules right now for the rest of their life right yes so uh, you know, and that's, and you know, it's hard when people, you know, it happens all the time. Oh, it's okay. It's, no, it's not okay for me and my dog, for my dogs to jump on you. I'm sorry. Yeah. And most people, they get that. Some people, they'll roll their eyes, but so what? They're not your dogs. Right. You know, and that's the one thing, like, I want to be able to set, and M, the woman with the two dogs, I thought, you know, she should understand because she goes through training and she takes her dogs for training to right. a facility, you know, like. I'm like, you know, they're new dogs to me. Yes, I know they're goldens and they're cute and they look old or they look like your dogs and stuff like that. But anyway, that's that's helpful. I'm I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna keep doing that. Right. Okay. So consistent thresholds. Okay. Um okay. introducing to other dogs. Yes. So uh just like any and now obviously your dogs they're they're a known commodity commodity. We know they're friendly with other dogs. So that's yeah. really helpful. But nevertheless, we still start intros the same as we would if we were unsure about their capacity to be friends with strange dogs and that would be yep. walks okay um, ah. and i'll tell you why right it, if we have a dog with an unknown history or we don't know how they are with other dogs we're going to be cautious because we don't want anything bad to happen right right when we have known commodities that dogs that are friendly the same rule applies because we don't want the initial in Inter introduction and interaction although friendly to be super intense right right we want to start their relationship stable and then allow it to grow from there right this way you know if they don't if you see them if they if they're introduced and the first time they it's like a melee and granted they're having a blast and everything's great but it's super intense yeah. you're gonna be walking down the street you're gonna have you know, 180 pounds of, of friggin' dog yanking you down the street because they're excited <laughs> to see their friends. Yeah. We need to slow the mind down and get them walking together in the same direction. And after they start settling into the walk, then maybe let them interact a little. That's really how the first intro should go, even for friendly dogs. Excellent. Okay. Should I do it one at a time or is yeah. it? The rule of thumb is always when you can one at a time because, you know, especially because you're still – honing in on your skills of handling, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that, you know, from a management standpoint, it would, it would be better. Now, if you're out with both of them and you, you have an opportunity, you know, take advantage of it. Right. Okay. You know, if, if you see your friends say, Hey, can I join you on the walk? And you know, just kind of walk them and just kind of get on the walk. If it becomes too manageable, you don't want to separate from that situation when they're at peak state. So at minimum, stop, make them sit, get their yeah. attention on you, then walk the other way. So there's a break between their enthusiasm to be with the others and you taking them away from that. Oh, so they don't think you're like yanking them away. Exactly. You always want to have a break, you know, because remember dogs are here and now. So, oh my God, there's, you know, there's Fido and Daisy. Woo! -hoo! Okay, this is yeah. too much. Guys, sit. Good boys. Okay, bye. And just go yeah. off it. You know what I mean? That's really good. Cause I I mean and and I mean it's one of those things you do unwittingly. And I'm not frantic about it so they don't think yeah. I'm reacting in fear or anything like that. And they are very good, Jeff, 
I mean, I, I was actually surprised at how, how well I've been able to walk them together. You know, they have some distinctions and we work on it and Henry is a little more pulley than Calvin and all that stuff. But, um, being at the lake has kind of reinforced us walking together simply because, you know, up there it's much less crowded than down here. There are no sidewalks, there's less traffic. So we've been walking a lot. I only walk them together up there because it, yeah, it's a lot a, easier to do. That's a great way to do it. Lower stimulation, lower stimul, you know, it lower triggers. Yeah. You have more But that's led to doing it up there has led to doing it here because I mean, what's, you know, once you start practice practicing walking together, they're much more comfortable now walking together. So we're taking longer walks now, um, but doing them together. Good. Yeah, um, it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just like the basics, right? We have to start inside with no distractions, and then yeah. outside with with distractions. So you, the lake house is lower distraction environment yeah. to prepare them for a higher distraction environment. Yeah. So it's been it's been really good. Okay. Okay, okay, so that's the intro. Once that's solidified and they do start playing, you mentioned it and you bring up a very valid point that some dogs can guard each other or be protective, or I hate to say this because I'm not fully sold on this theory, but pack mentality, for lack of a better phrase. Right. Right, where they kind of team up and gang up on another. Even in play, they could do this, right? You see it in dog parks all the time. Uh, right. People who frequent the dog parks, those dogs that know each other, they tend to gang up on the newcomer. Right. Yeah. And it's not bad. Yeah, Most of the time. It, it, <laughs> yeah. What's that? I'm not really a dog park person. Me neither. I go there to watch because I love watching dogs interact for my own benefit. Oh, that's um, really cool. Yeah, I, um, I, I used to do it a lot in Jersey. I think they thought I was like a doggy pedophile or something because I wouldn't <laughs> no. have a dog and I'd just be staring at the dogs. <laughs> There was something I, I hate to even say it because right now it would be suspicious. My friend who's a, my, my friend, my niece is a dog walker in Hoboken and there's some guy who's going into the dog park in Hoboken and opening the gate, like sitting there without a dog sitting there and then leaving and leaving the gate open. Oh, so dogs are running out the gate. It's just people up. are, there's yeah. something wrong with people. Man. Yeah, that's not, so, that's not good. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah. So once they're, once they're interacting um, and you're right, no resources initially. Just let them be dogs. They don't need balls and tugs and frisbees. They don't need it. Right. Dogs love to play with each other, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's how they do it. I mean, there's there's no balls and and frisbees in the wild. And who knows? Maybe maybe <laughs> some some social you know canines in the wild. They might play with sticks and stuff, which is fine. But initially, no resources. You know, and then you know if if you guys feel like you need to, you can add a ball or something at some point. But if the dogs are playing and having fun, they don't need anything else. Just let uh -huh. them play and have fun. Right? We're so preoccupied with giving them, giving, because yeah. we love them, right? I mean, we love them. I mean, so we want to give, give, give. Well, letting them play and have a blast, that's, I mean, that's giving. Yeah. That's allowing them to, to engage in natural social behavior. Oh my God. All right. We're going to go outside for a second. Cause these guys are, <laughs> go they like, they like to dig up. Hang on. They came out and you can't see, but they were digging a hole in my garden. See these cute boys. Let's go. Come on, come out here. Um, so, but as part of that, like the walking part, should I seek to introduce them one at a time? Even yeah. To yeah, and, if if you know you're going to set up an int introduction, yes, then one at a time, right? If you're out and about and you have both of them, like we talked about, manage it the best way you can. Um, the same thing, yeah. okay. But it, ideally, you're setting up introductions one on one, um, because I mean, obviously, for handling purposes, uh, also for observation purposes, it's a lot easier to observe. Just like with walking, remember, you, you can't you can't observe two dogs on the walk when you're trying to leash train, right? You got to you can only observe one at a time. So right. kind of the same concept because you're, it, it's about gathering information too. It's not just, oh, they're friendly, but how friendly, right? Because too friendly too soon, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing either because then you can have over exuberance and intense play from the get-go. And like I said, 
they're establishing their relationship intensely. And we don't want that. We yeah. want to establish relationship more balanced. And should we start someplace neutral? Like it's so hard right now because they're, they're, it's so and the walks are one way to start it of course but if you want to start with play off leash there's no place to go right now because because even if I were to say like let's meet at 6 a.m. at the at a dog park or something like that the dog parks are closed everything is closed right now so really the only fenced in place to go is somebody's backyard yeah so the thing is you know when, when, when we're doing dog intros the rule of thumb right out of the book is neutral territory. Neutral territory means a place that none of the dogs have ever been, which is impossible for the most part because, you know, but again, here's the thing. If you have a friendly dog, the dog is going to be friendly everywhere. Right. So the rule doesn't necessarily apply. Okay. Now, if your friend has friendly dogs, but they're territorial, you can't use their backyard. That's right. not, the right place but if they're friendly dogs and they have a history of being friendly with but with dogs coming to their house and you have friendly dogs you're probably going to be okay okay right but again the, you start with a walk so you're not just walking in the house and letting two gigantic dogs go into the backyard in a melee right you're going on a controlled walk letting them get to know each other maybe they sniff some butts right uh, and then they're going into the property together and is there like is it should should we walk them like five times before we introduce them or is one walk where they are successfully walking next to each other and you know sniff each other and and we walk some dogs is that, is that some dogs need one walk some dogs need 21 walks okay <laughs> there's, again okay. There, there's no exact formula it's all about trust what you're seeing out of the dogs okay right and remember you know I deal a lot with problem dogs, right? You know, I know. Just, you know, so a lot of them are socially deficient. They weren't socialized. So we're taking like extreme precaution when introducing them to other animals. Yes. You know, um, my personal pets, I know what dogs they're going to like and what dogs they're not going to like. I don't have to worry. Um, yeah. If I see an assertive male, I'm not introducing Deuce to that dog. It's not going to go well. And I'm not right. going to put their dog or my dog in that position. I have nothing to prove. I'm a dog trainer, right? But I'm, I'm not going to be all bravo and bravado and ego driven to show how great my dog is. I'm not going to put any dog in that type of position. Uh, right. The same thing with Sable. She gets along with a lot of dogs, but she doesn't have a sex issue. She has an, a, a, an anxiety issue. So regardless of the other dog's sex, if they're edgy, she ain't going to jive but she'll get along with males and females alike. Whereas Deuce is more male focused. Yeah. So he's more same sex conflict type of dog. Yeah. So you is know, it really hard for you? I mean, I think this is really interesting. Is it hard for you to have the dogs there train like that you are training? No, like, I know you keep no a lot. because I have so many Guinea pigs here. <laughs> right. <laughs> sometimes yeah. I have passive dogs. Sometimes I have aggressive dogs. So it gives yep. me an opportunity to expose these dogs to a lot of different situations uh, because yep. not all dogs are going to get along, but the dogs I'm working at minimum, they have to coexist peacefully in the presence of other dogs. So I don't yep. need to have them off leash to make sure that they're going to be good companion animals for somebody. Right. Whereas some I can, you know? So. Yeah. And again, they're only with me for a short time. So it's not like I have a whole lot of time to really get them perfect socially. Uh, you know, so we focus more on obedience and, and you know, overall behavior and uh, their ability to uh, to deal with stress. How long do you, I know this is completely off topic, but okay. no, I mean, not really. I, I did refer, by the way, I referred my friends to you and I'm not sure. Yeah, they, don't he contacted they, me. He needs more hands on. I gave him a, a, an excellent trainer referral up in Jersey. Okay, you did. You, you're the, you, gave, them the, you gave them the person in Englewood right no, is that way Sussex you... County oh you did give him a Sussex okay all right they're frustrating me so much but yes they it de he definitely they're, they're in Sussex County yes yeah. yeah yeah my my best friend Sarah she's an amazing dog trainer so oh good I hope they're, I hope they're... yeah it's it's a it's a persistent problem they're having they're having real issues yeah as soon as we talked to each other we played phone tag a little as soon as we talked to each other we both knew that he needed hands-on a, virtual, yeah. a video consult. I mean, it, it might be helpful, but he, they need help. 
Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Cause I'm really worried and I'm worried. I mean, this is totally a personal thing, but I'm worried that they don't pursue the training and it only is going to get worse because it just keeps yeah. happening and yeah. it's, it's not good. So. Yeah. So, and then poor, poor little guy. I mean, I, anyway, I, you know, that's a human, that's a human thing, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. I recognize that even with my cute galoofing golden retrievers, that it's my training that's more important. You know, that, that makes that training possible because yeah. you're training me. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I need. But you're, I think you're, you're training your dogs for what you need from them. Yes. Yes. And right. I want to, you know, it's interesting for me. Again, they're, they're my third, this is my third experience of having dog like and i guess you know brandy came to me pretty fully formed she was eight and a half but but she was the one who was afraid of dogs and i probably should have pursued better training for her but phoenix my original dog you know i did like pet 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 smart or pet pet i guess pet smart in-store training a couple of sessions of that and then we just sort of went with it and she was a very good happy-go-lucky dog but she yeah. could have stood for more training too so this is like I'm this this is really really helpful for me. Yeah. And but and you, I mean it's not unique to you. Most people they train their dogs to a level that's manageable for them. Yeah. I mean yes. that's just the reality of it. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean. You know, yeah, I mean, but but when you hit issues later on and you think I had I had just such a great my parents got me and I can never I I can't remember what it was called. And I think I gave it to my sister and it was lost, but I had the greatest book that gave like sort of basic information about the life cycle of a dog and what you should be doing and how you should be training and what you, you know, it, the different points throughout a dog's life when that might come back. And, you know, you might see, you know, once you train a dog, it, it doesn't mean that they're going to be perfect and wonderful forever. There may come points or stressor points or, changes in their life or their hormones or whatever that you might have to. And I loved that book. It was so great because it was really just such a good kind of map to follow. Um, and I'm so regretful that I can't find it because, because it was really helpful just to have it and look right. at it. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the thing with especially life stage development, uh, I think the biggest mistake people make is they socialize their puppies yeah and then they stop right oh interesting because they you know the dog hits a year year and a half old and they stop socializing the dog the dog's still a puppy right socialization really should continue the first five years of a dog's life because dogs they mature anywhere from two to five years of age depending on the individual uh and the environment so like so, right now you have young adults that are still maturing like if yeah. If you focused on just one thing right now, it would be socialization because you could teach sit any time in a dog's life. You can't, right. you can't recapture youth and maturation. Right. So if you had to like focus, like super focus on one thing, it's social. That's a, my biggest thing is socialization. Obviously exercise too. Socialization is number one. And, and people think, oh yeah, I socialized the heck out of my dog. We took him to the park. We took them to uh, the pet store. I'm like, okay, you socialized your dog in two places. Yeah. Socialization is everywhere. And, and I actually did a video on this and I, I tell people all the time. I said, as soon as you think you socialized your dog in enough places, go to one more place. <laughs> That's right? really interesting. Yeah. So, but you know, you, you, by socialization, you mean not just, not just other dogs, just but also people and exposure, situations. Right? Exposure, exposure, yeah. right? Uh, you know, here I'm limited because I'm in North Carolina. I don't get, I can't duplicate the same socialization that I could when I was up in Jersey, just because yeah. we don't have the population. But, <laughs> you know, we go to, we go near the dog park. I don't go in with other people's dogs for, you know, liability reasons. But, you know, I do that. I do parks. There's a gas station down the road where there's a lot of traffic. It's a big, like, you know, RV truck type of gas station. So yes. there's a lot of activity. We go to the local pet store, which is a small pet store. There's another pet store, which is bigger. It's called Pet Sense. It's kind of like Petco. So we go yeah. there. We go to Home Depot. I go to Walmart. I, you know, I try to do as, as many different environments because socialization can just be visual. It doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, hello there. Right. Right. 
That's so interesting. You said you say about the traffic, like these guys, as and as you know, they were found in rural Georgia. So they so they definitely even walking here in Ridgewood, which again, you you do know New Jersey. Yeah. It's a little crazy here. Yeah. But they would start, you know, Mike I, I live on a tiny little court. It's six houses. And there's a bigger street next to me. It's all twenty five miles an hour around here, but people drive like lunatics and there's a ton of traffic. But during the last couple of months, it's been relatively quiet, but I would go down to the road. There's a, a sort of a mean thoroughfare at the end of the block and we would walk. That's part of where we would walk. And they would, they would like startle every time walking down that street. Both of them will do it. It doesn't matter. Usually the dog that's on the street side is the most sort of nervous. Yeah. But I noticed yesterday that they've really calmed down from that. Like they've really started to get used to the tribe. They still kind of look at like if a big truck or a landscaping truck or, you know, or an ambulance comes by or something, I'm close to the hospital or fire truck or something comes by, but they've really stopped like, you know, uh, you know, they ha- sort of hop and look over their shoulders when they hear a car coming or something. They've really calmed down on that, which yeah, is good. Psychologically, that's called habituation. So they're, they're desensitized now to the environment. Yeah. So much like when, when I'm working with expecting parents, I tell them, start playing the sound of babies crying when you're like uh, one month, four months pregnant. Don't do anything. Just let it play and let it be ambient noise in the background for the dogs to just get used to so they don't overreact when a baby does actually cry, right? Yeah, so that's really... That's, that's kind of, you know, you're, the exposure and the repetition of, of that exposure is helping them settle into the environment yeah good okay well i'll increase that because i mean i've done i've done a lot of stuff and and they see people all the time people love that i have never gotten so many comments about like and i've had golden retrievers for a long time but the two of them together everybody's like Ooh, it's yeah. like i mean i haven't even met them in person but i could almost feel their personalities through the they're screen. really a hoot you know? They really are a hoot, but they're very sweet and they're very good. Like if I stop and talk to people on the street, they generally sit next to me. And if I'm talking for a long time, they'll lie down. And they're, they're like, I, I, they're the calmest dogs. And it's really nice. I know that's funny after show, after you've seen the video of them playing together, but they really are. They're sort of like that perfect combination of young and playful, but also when I'm talking and I, And I don't know if they came that way or like, I feel like they've always done it or we were doing it one at a time, but, um, but it's really great to be able to rely on the fact that I can stop and talk to somebody and they're just going to sit next to me. Yeah, nice. Yeah. They're just very, very, very calm, but I'll be more thoughtful about walking them past stores and things like that. There, you know, there haven't been that many people around and, but the stores are starting to reopen here now. They just lifted the stay at home order. And um, so we'll have more people out and about. Maybe I'll, you know, they don't like the heat so much, but maybe I'll make more of an effort to like walk downtown or something where they're walking through pavement and sort of town as opposed to, because otherwise it's basically all residential here and all country up at the lake. Right. You know, that's yeah. sort of the division. Yeah. But I'll be more thoughtful about that. I cannot wait to bring them to see my parents because my mother is going to love them. But that's another environment where it'll be really good for them to be. It's a retirement community. Oh, nice. You know, like an apartment complex so will be going inside. and Right. Yeah. You know, so that, that'll, that'll be good. My mother will just die. But um, so I'll be, I'll be more thoughtful about that part, Jeff. I oh. did, I, like I wasn't really thinking about that. Yeah. Especially now because, you know, they're in that two to three age now where they're going to start maturing. So increased yeah. socialization is important right now. Okay, I'll, 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 I, I have lots of things that I can do to keep that. And especially now that I'm walking them together, you know, yeah. walking them separately. I was walking so much, but it's they were shorter consuming. walks. Yeah. yeah, it is time so, consuming. Now that I'm walking them together, yeah. we can take longer walks in different places. And that, that actually is really helpful right. for, for me to do with them. And that's, that's your ultimate goal anyway, is to go everywhere with them. So Exactly, exactly. <laughs> It's exactly right. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's exactly right. And it, the only thing is the heat and humidity. <laughs> yeah. I, I will at, at, at some point, it's actually pretty funny. Henry will be pulling a little bit ahead and Calvin will be pulling a little bit behind. <laughs> Calvin's like, can we just go home and lie down? Yeah. I, okay. And Henry's like, look, a squirrel. Come on, let's yeah. go. 
Nice. So I've been using treats also on the, you know, I've, I've kind of like phased out for the most part, the bathroom issues, we're in good shape. Good. Um, they're, they've been very good. So I, I sometimes will shoot them a little treat, each of them, you know, just as entertainment when they poop, but you know, we're, we're otherwise doing pretty well with that. But I do carry little, little training treats when we walk also. Good. So every once in a while I'll give them a treat sort of at my thigh, you know, like, so their faces are at my thigh just to try and keep them reoriented. And I've been using also, this works very well with Henry, although it sometimes takes me doing it 10 or 15 times, you know, walk a few paces, make him sit and wait, you know, and I have him also, it, it's funny because he, because he's a little bit more of a puller on the walk, I have him a little bit better conditioned to when I say sit, you know, wait and sit, that he can't move until I release with okay. Hen Henry is very good at that. Calvin is so much better generally at just wait and sit and being calm and sort of standing. You know, if I stop, he stops, he walks slower, he's not pulling as much. So I don't make him wait so much for the okay release. <laughs> so it's a little, I'm trying to be thoughtful about that, like it, making sure. It's okay. They're, they're going to learn despite you. <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm, I'm capable of overthinking everything. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get overly analytical myself sometimes. So <laughs> <laughs> They're really very, I mean, they're very good. I was thinking, again, when I was thinking about the traffic yesterday, I was like, man, you know, they're really very good. And I, I felt so much better when you said about, about their play being good because most of the time I think, no, they're just playing. And then I think, but I don't, and, and maybe that's taking it back to where, where I mean, I guess to the first point about the play and figuring out, like, how do I figure out what the right threshold is? I, I know it's sort of my gut, but sometimes I'm like, well, what tells me, you know, what, what is too intense or what is too long? I want them to play and be crazy. I just don't want it, you know, and in a way, I, I sort of wish I had never heard of litter mate syndrome because that's the part I keep going back to and saying, oh, I'm doing down, like if I let it go on too much, it's going to ruin them for other dogs and for each other. And no, the, it's the, not that, right? Yeah, like they're no, not. It's, it's, well, I mean, the, the, they're not fully mature yet either. So that is something to keep in the back of your mind, but not be paranoid about, right? Uh, the other thing okay. is this though, is that see, when we disconnect them from play, right? And you're going to, it's just... Again, your threshold is going to be different than my threshold for allowing mm -hmm. dogs to play. You need to just kind of, like I said, whether it's a certain level of intensity and you can't go by growling because they play growl from the get-go. Yeah. So that's not a variable. So it's really, it is really gut and intuition. You just have to try to be as consistent as possible. And remember, when you disconnect them, you're bringing them down a little bit and then you're allowing them to go back and play. So that's right. going to put a ceiling on their thresh on, on their own intensity as well. The repetition uh, okay. of cutting them off at, at a, to the best of your ability, the same level of intensity every time you're bringing them back down. They're coming to you, right? Separating them from that intensity. Come good boys, little treat. And then you allow them to go interact again. Yeah. So that's, you're helping them with decision-making until such time as they can make that decision on their own. Okay. So eventually doing that, eventually they'll play and then they'll sort of calm down or I'll always sort of need to whistle to say, okay, because they, they seem to want, of course, you know, yeah, I mean, that's the benefit, I guess, of having the two of them is that they really want to play with each other and yeah. have a good time and run around and burn off energy. Yeah, Right now, you're focused on making sure that everything's perfect right now, which is good yeah. that you're doing that. So what what in all likelihood what's going to happen over the next year is you're not even going to realize it but your level of your your threshold for allowing them to play will probably elevate a little too because yeah. you'll be comfortable with them you'll know that okay this is normal yeah right yeah i'm sure i can see that happening because i go through phases where i'm like no 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 they're just brothers they're playing and then i'm like wait a sec i don't what, yeah, <laughs> what no, the heck no, is going on no phases right now consistent consistent rules yeah worry about yeah. phases later on right yeah uh, let's get them right. to let's let let's get them to three years old of consistent <laughs> rules seriously so they're so we no. know that they're closer to maturity 
Okay. No, that's good. That's it, and it's good for me to try and figure out. I'll I'll try and figure out what the what the level is. And of course, it's sort of balancing out between here because I'll let them play in the backyard. Um, um, and I have a like I have a little pla I have one of those little plastic wading pools oh, in the cool. backyard. Oh my god, they are a hoot running <laughs> in facing and they'll run around and then they'll, they'll jump in the pool. It's very sort of silly. But but the different environment between here and up at the lake, although they sort of do the same thing, it's just you know at the lake it just involves it involves a, you know, Cal Calvin principally jumping in the lake, although Henry now is starting to, to, to go in as well. Um, um, so that's like sort of the, the intermission is I'll throw the toy and Calvin will go in the lake and then they'll come out. But even after that, they don't always go running up into the yard and roll around and, and fight. Some, and sometimes. You may also see different, different intensity at the lake house versus your house. Yes. There's yes, more ah! <laughs> at the lake yeah, house, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. As so, you can see. And the other thing is there's more like, I mean, here, of course, it's a fenced in backyard. There are other dogs around me, but this is a fenced in oh. backyard where they, where they live. Up there, there's no fences, which is one of the reasons why you know, I want to be able to sort of get them back a little yeah. bit faster. So I'm, that's really, I think, like I can't wait to to be trying that um but the other thing is that I do have Goliath next door uh, you know they they live next door to me and across the street is another bulldog who will come down and be at the dock so so there's other dogs around as well so I, I, I you know it's a totally different environment everything is freer at the lake yeah. our lives are free you know the crates are different so I don't I don't crate them in quite the same way up there either because right because they're enclosed crate, you know, they're the enclosed canvas crates and it's hot. And, yeah. And that's um, fine. Different environment, different rules. Nothing wrong yeah, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it, it, the whole, the whole, it's a much smaller house, like it's everything about it. But, but I also feel better because they are like the bathroom issues have definitely right. dissipated, which is, which is great, but I'm, you know, I'm taking them out. Um, okay, that's that's great. I think so. That's a lot for me to work on, but but I think I can really, I think I can really do it. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Look, I mean, look how far you've come already in such a short time. I'm really amazed. You really and it's, have. You put the work in, and you're seeing the results. These guys, I mean, they're really great dogs. They are yeah. really great, 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 great dogs. It's fun. They're really fun. So you know, I. I, and I'm, you know, again, it's nice to be home and be able to, to do it and work on it and focus on it. Cause it's pretty, it's pretty easy. I don't know if I could do this much focus on it if I wasn't at home. Right. It's really interesting to me how, how, you know, the state of the universe right now has changed, you know, what, what's possible and what's impossible, not impossible, but would have been a lot harder yeah. if I had to go to the office. And, you know, so this has really been a great experience. Awesome. So. Awesome. Okay.